These warriors shared many skills, both magical and martial, and together they adventured into the heart of the Winterlands. Welcome to Raid Story Legends with me, Layla Fox. Hey there, welcome to Raid Story Legends. I am Layla Fox. This is a weekly YouTube series that I do to share lore from some of our favorite champs from Raid Shadow Legends. Now, today's story is a little different. Today's story is actually Quest to the Heart of Winter, and it's part one. This is a fun story that actually incorporates many of our champions together, and I thought that this would be perfect given that we are into the Christmas holiday season. So today I'm going going to share part one with you and make sure that you stay tuned into another video for what I share part two. So let's get into the story for Quest of the Heart of Winter. Far beyond the jagged peaks of the Mountains of Despair and the freezing waters of the Great Northern Sea lie the Winterlands of Teleria. It is a cold and hospitable domain of glaciers and snow and blood chilling winds where night reigns supreme and days are short. The Winterlands are home to Arctic beasts, undead, frost controls, and mysteries best left forgotten beneath the ice. The Nor tribes that once ventured into the tundra, sprawling along the borders of the Winterlands, had often witnessed strange shimmering lights across the night sky. These auroras, their shamans maintained, were signs of powerful arcane storms that swirled and raged somewhere in the very heart of Winterlands. There beyond the glaciers and the impassable cliffs was supposed to be a font so pure that a single drop of its water could restore youth and cure ailments, which would otherwise be beyond the skill of Teleria's greatest healers. But to find it, one would have to brave hundreds of miles of frozen wastelands, pass through blizzards that could turn any living being into a statue of ice, and fight their way through mighty Jotuns, whose strength was sworn to the protection of the font. Unbeknownst to the humans, the font's wonders were true, given to it by the blessings of the Arbiter and, by extension, Lumea herself. Its crystalline waters were light itself given form, and its power was far subtler and far reaching than the Nor imagined. Alas, a source of light and a symbol of Lumea's love, such as this, could not have avoided the attention of her eternal foe, Siroth, forever. As the shadow spread across Teleria and his influence strengthened in every corner of the realm, Siroth worked through his minions and through gullible mortals to undermine the forces of good in the Winterlands. His warlocks conjured up plagues and hailstorms of black ice to descend upon the land. His undead thralls marched forth in shambling armies to battle the Jotuns. For centuries, the giants resisted valiantly, but as the Arbiter's power waned, so too did their numbers dwindle. Those who did not perish fled south rather than be twisted by the shadow into an abominable parody of their former selves. The few champions still loyal to Lumea's cause had chosen to perform a ritual that encased the font in ice impenetrable to their foe before they too vanished without a trace. Slowly, life ebbed away from the Winterlands. But even the longest of nights must end and dawn always comes to banish the shadows. Lemaeus' faith will not give up on the blessed font of their goddess, not when it was in danger of being corrupted by Siroth. It was none other than Sir Nicholas himself, who left his frozen fortress to marshal mighty champions that would dedicate their life to all that was good in Teleria. And though the goddess's faithful were many, he knew that he would need to recruit a very specific band of champions to succeed. As revealed to him in a vision, of startling clarity. Far and wide does Sir Nicholas travel, from the valleys that lay near the mountains of despair, where the dwarven army camped, to the lavish capital of Arabia, and to the shadowy thicket of the Durham Forest. Guided by his vision, he called upon Lysandra of the royal line of Arabia, Elhane, whose service to the Arbiter obliged her to fight in Lumea's name where the need was greatest, and the mountain king of the dwarves to join him on the quest. Between them, these warriors shared many skills, both magical and martial, and together they ventured into the heart of the Winterlands. Many deadly perils awaited the champions. Beasts and foes without count beset them, blizzards that drained every ounce of Sir Nicholas's magical prowess on merely ensuring the survival of his companions. But the worst was yet to come. 
The brave heroes had almost made it to the font when an ambush was sprung upon them on a narrow mountain path. Scores upon scores of icebound corpses and skeletons burst from beneath the snow, crashing against the company like an unstoppable tide. Many undead tumbled down the mountainside, thrown into the bottomless chasm below by the dislodged rocks and ice boulders, but they would not relent. There was something, a malicious will directing them, yet it did not reveal itself. Step by step, Lumea's champions retreated, felling countless foes for every wound they took in turn, but they knew it would not be long before they were overwhelmed. It was in that moment Elhane darted forward, cutting her way through a dozen skeletal warriors and ordering the others to flee just as she fired an enchanted arrow into the slope above. The last Sir Nicholas and his companions saw of Elaine was her defiant stand against the undead horde. Then an avalanche caused by the elven warrior's arrow swept everything off the path. So this is part one for the quest to the heart of winter. Now, if you've been following along with my Radiator Story Legends series, you're going to see that this story fits in really, really well with the story for Stag Knight and also the story for Wurlum Frost King, who we see an image of right here. And we're also starting to see that something is going on with Elhane. Because they say here is that she pretty much had a last stand against the undead horde as the companions ran off. And if you are familiar with Raid Shadow Legends and familiar with lore in the game, there's more to Elaine than what we just see. So please make sure you stay tuned for my next Raid Story Legends video, which will be Quest to the Heart of Winter Part 2. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like, leaving me a comment down below, and let me know what you think. I in particular really like this fun story because I enjoy the stories that start to incorporate many of the champions together. You know, because again, we have storylines for Sir Nicholas, which I just shared, and we also have a storyline for the Mountain King that I shared as well. So then we start to see how their paths and their stories start to cross and interweave together. And then we come with a fun story like this, which again, like I said, does have a part two, so make sure you stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this story and I can't wait to share my next Raid Story Legends with you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, you can catch us live on twitch.tv slash Nation four days a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and be part of our community and we'll see you there.